Between the ages of 21 and 25, Jackie Robinson didn't play baseball at all. But yet, he still went on to break and make so many records in just 10 years in the league. He's probably the most respected baseball player. But how good was he actually? In 1947, Jackie Robinson became the first African American to play in Major League Baseball bringing an end to racial segregation in professional baseball. With a career batting average of .311 and 761 runs batted in, he got called to the All-Star Games on six consecutive occasions, which means he only missed four All-Star Games in his 10 years in the MLB. It also meant that he outshined Babe Ruth, who had two, and Barry Bonds, 14, in 22 years of their MLB careers each. He also bagged some other huge records, such as a World Series champion in 1955 on six World Series appearances. He was National League MVP in 1949 and MLB Rookie of the Year in 1947. And oh, let's not forget the two stolen base leader awards he won in the National League or when he became the batting champion in 1949. And then he added a couple of cherries on top of everything by getting his jersey number 42 retired by all MLB teams, including the ones he broke their hearts when he played against them. A movie titled 42, which nearly grossed $100 million, was released in 2013 and was a biographical sports film done to honor him. The late Chadwick Boseman starred as Jackie. Robinson was also a Monument Park honoree and is a no-brainer that he was voted into the Hall of Fame on his first ballot. But how did someone who didn't look too determined at first to be a baseball player become so great? He went to fight in the war, played tennis and three other sports, and was away from the game for a good five years while his peers developed their skills in the diamond. Didn't seem to matter to him, but how is it possible that he still had all the accolades? Was he given an edge because he was the first black man in professional baseball? Or did he actually dazzle in the world of baseball? We'd have to go back a bit to how his story began and why many like this article on Bleacher Report called him the greatest athlete ever. Jackie was born Jack Roosevelt Robinson on January 31st, 1919 into a family of sharecroppers. Now, if you think that sounds like a certain American president's name, that is because it is. Jackie was named after President Theodore Roosevelt, who died 25 days before the MLB legend was born. Jackie was the youngest of five siblings who all lived in relative poverty in Cairo, Georgia. It was a racially tough community, and on top of all the struggles the family had to face, Jackie's father abandoned them in 1920. This forced them to relocate to Pasadena, California, where Jackie's mother, Mally Robinson, single-handedly raised her kids by doing so many odd jobs. But it wasn't long enough before the hardship started to really get to Jackie as he went on to join a neighborhood gang. Thankfully, a friend named Carl Anderson was instrumental in ensuring that he quit before it was too late. Before he went into sports, his older brothers, Frank and Mac, were already inspiring athletes, with Mac having won a silver in the 200-meter relay behind Jesse Owens at the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, Germany. So after Robinson completed John Muir High School, he enrolled at Muir Tech and played a lot of sports by lettering in four of them, which included football, basketball, track, and baseball. He was the quarterback of the football team, a guard as a basketballer, a shortstop and catcher as a baseballer, and a track and field participant. He went home with awards in the broad jump, and he still had a lot of energy, talent, and time for tennis as he won the single boys championship at the junior level in the Pacific Coast Negro Tennis Tournament in 1936. He also earned a spot with Hall of Famers Ted Williams and Bob Lennon on the Pomona Annual Baseball All-Star Team. Nobody in sports history has ever excelled in the number of sports that Jackie did, not even the likes of Bo Jackson, Glenn Davis, or John Thorpe who were also versatile athletes in their years. But it wasn't all roses and records. When he was at Pasadena Junior College, he broke his brother's broad jump record and was named amongst 10 students to the school's order of the mast and dagger. But then something happened that almost took him out of sport against his wish. 
He was injured by fracturing his ankle, but this didn't put him out of the game. What almost did was a two-year suspended sentence after he verbally antagonized the arrest of a black friend. He was also known for getting into run-ins with the police by disputing and pointing out their alleged racial injustices. After he graduated from PJC, he enrolled at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and became the first black man to get varsity letters in four different sports, which included track, football, basketball, and baseball. But this is where things get interesting. Robinson didn't particularly do well in baseball. In fact, it was his worst sport. In track, he won the 1940 NCAA championship in long jump. In football, he set the record for the highest rushing yards per carry with 12.2 yards per attempt on 42 carries. But when it came to baseball, he was nowhere to be found as he had a meager .97 in his only season. But it didn't matter to him, at least not yet. He met his future wife Rachel Isom in UCLA, who is a registered nurse and a former American professor. Then Jackie did the unexpected when he decided to quit UCLA, despite the discontent of his mother and slum. He then went on to work for the National Youth Administration, NYA, in California as an assistant athletic director. But as the NYA was disbanded, Jackie moved to Honolulu in 1941 to play football before returning to California later that year to join the Los Angeles Bulldogs as a running back. It looked certain that he had finally chosen football, but then World War II began. He was drafted into the military in 1942 and stationed at Fort Riley, where he met and befriended heavyweight boxing champ Joe Lewis. After the war, he briefly returned to football until he received an offer in 1945 from the Kansas City Monarchs. They asked him to join the Negro Leagues as a professional baseball player for a salary of $400 per month, and he agreed. He played 47 games with the Monarchs as a shortstop and recorded five home runs, 13 stolen bases, and batted .387. He had an OBP of .449 and a slugging percentage of .600. Then he went on to sign for Brooklyn's International League Farm Club in 1946, which began his ascent into legendary status. It's important to note that Robinson made his MLB debut with the Dodgers against the Boston Braves on April 15, 1947, at the age of 28, when most players were either phasing out or hitting their peak. So with the war and the color barrier slashing off a major part of his career, how did he do in the league? In his rookie year, while playing both as a first and second baseman, he played 151 games, had a batting average of .297, a slugging percentage of .427, and an on-base percentage of .383. He led the league in stolen bases with 29 and sacrificed hits with 28. And he won the Rookie of the Year award and finished at number 5 in the MVP voting. Being the only black man in the league was tough. It wasn't until 1948, when more black players were admitted into the league, that the pressures lessened. In that same year, he signed a new contract for $12,000, and his game improved drastically when he went back to second base, where he mostly excelled. Remember that he was also a fine quarterback once upon a time? Well, he brought that same energy and used his speed to dominate the base paths. Prior to him joining the Dodgers, only Pete Reiser and George Case led the National League in stolen bases, with their highest being 34 and 28 respectively. When Jackie came, he led the NL with 29 in his rookie season and 37 in 1949. He was also good in the field. In 2001, when Bill James released his book title, The Historical Baseball Abstract, he described Robinson as a dominant defensive player. He wrote, I would not rule out the possibility that Jackie may have been a far better defensive second baseman than even the people who watched him regularly realized. Jackie, I would suggest, was such a controversial figure, such a polarizing figure, that it must have been extremely difficult to see him for exactly what he was, even when he was right in front of you. Now, he wasn't the best hitter as suggested by his career batting average of .311, but this was because of the way he positioned himself and hit the ball, which was was characteristic of his era, as he would usually hit off his front foot and would always bring his bat parallel to the ground behind him before taking a swing. 
Nevertheless, he still managed to cause some damage. During his 10-year career, which he played entirely for the Brooklyn Dodgers, he had a total plate appearance of 5,941, with an adjusted wins above replacement of 68.0 and a wins above average of 41.4. Now, this would not compete with the greatest players in baseball, but it is commendable for his time. His WAR at 9.7 in 1951 was the highest in the National League, and even when he had 8.4 WAR in 1951, he also led the league. After retiring in 1956, at 37 years of age, he quit baseball totally to work with Chock Full O' Nuts, an American coffee company. He was made the vice president of the company, which made him the first black vice president of a major American corporation. But this isn't surprising considering the kind of varying interests he had growing up and even after becoming an adult. In 1950, when he was still playing baseball, he starred as himself in a biopic titled The Jackie Robinson Story. And before his death from a heart attack on October 24, 1972, he continued to bring down racial barriers. In 1962, he became the first African-American to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Then in 1965, he became the first black man to be an announcer on television for ABC TV Sports. He was also a huge civil rights figure who Dr. Martin Luther King acknowledged when he called him a legend and symbol in his own time who challenged the dark skies of intolerance and frustration. After his death, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He received a Congressional Gold Medal. His home in Brooklyn was made a landmark, and an asteroid was named after him. Every year on April 15th is Jackie Robinson Day in America. If you enjoyed this video about Jackie Robinson, check out the video on the screen now, or the one we posted below, because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.